What up, dude? All right, so today's date is, which I cannot believe, 18th of December, 2018. It blows my mind, bro. Blows my mind. So with that said, uh, this is the Q&A session for CIA, Clients in Abundance Gold. So what I want to share is, as we dive into this, I can see people joining in good stuff. What's up? What's up, Jen? Yo, yo, yo. I'm looking forward to our one-to-one. -one. Jen just become a private client. She's just done a tour around... Uh, like Chicago area, she's been on stage. I think she did like five cities or something. Uh, just become a private client, and we are going to kick some butt. <laughs> she's also coming to the Mansion Mastermind. If you haven't heard of it, clientsinabundance.com forward slash mansion. It's going to be pretty badass. Um, so what's up, what's up, Deborah? Uh, Deborah just joined. Uh, Deborah just upgraded to Elite this week. Congratulations, Deborah. Um, what's up, Angela? So look, here's what I want to share with everybody. I'm going to put this down a second. So there's a couple of things I want to quickly share. This is the Q&A session. As we dive into the Q&A session, I want you to think about, and I want to just give you some bit of content here. First of all, can you hear me okay? If you can, just let me know in the chat box so you can hear me okay. And then I want you to think about decisions. I want you to think about decisions for 2018 that you made that maybe you didn't follow through on. And I want you to think about decisions that you can make in 2019 that you will follow through on based on the learning from 2018, I want you just to think about that. So as I go into now the, the new year, actually we're breaking up, I'm gonna break up for Christmas, I'm gonna take two weeks off over the Christmas period, and I'm not gonna just take the time off work, which if you wanna call it work, we can call it work, but actually showing up and actually serving people, but I'm actually gonna be just chilling on my own, I'm gonna be spending time with my family, but I'm gonna be on my own looking at the business and looking at myself. How did I act through the year? Because I dropped the ball a few times. I did things, I said I was going to do things and I didn't follow through on them. Like why? Why do we do this? I want to observe myself so I can become a better human being. None of us are perfect, right? But you've got to fail forward fast. You've got to understand that if you're going to make a mistake, that's fine, but we've got to pick ourselves up and move forward fast. So, um, cool. And then Jen says, I'm going to book some speaking in San Diego too as well. Uh, before and after the mastermind, go you. What up, Leah? Leah's in the building as well. Leah just said hi. All right, so cool. If you want to fire, uh, if you want to fire your uh, questions into the chat box, I'm here to answer any questions that you may have for me today. And then I want to just talk about the number one thing. There's, there's really people asking, hey, AJ, what's the number one thing for your business? And we can talk about like sales. We can say like sales, if you don't make a sale, nothing moves without the sale. So important to have, have sales. However, before you make the sale, you need to set up the sale. So there's two things you want to focus on moving forward, um, because I can't even remember if this is the last uh, Q&A session before the new year. Is it? I think it is. Maybe not. Maybe we've got one next we week as well. We've got one more. Okay. But even between now and the next session, I want you to think about this. Two things. Set them up, knock them down. You need to set the sale up, and you need to knock the sale down. So how do you do this? Well, Peter Drucker calls it marketing makes selling superfluous which basically means that the marketing makes the selling the simple step that means that marketing should do all the heavy lifting for you so how do you do that well you need to understand who your target market is go through area one like literally go through area one it's a lot of work but the more you dig into that work the more you're going to understand your perfect prospect and the same as this if you understand your market better than they understand themselves they will look to you for the solution so you want to start looking at that. Now they look to you for the solution. Then you go to area two. You create your solution. Keep it simple. People don't want to buy complex. They'll spend more money with you to keep it simple. So keep it simple, right? So now you can set up the marketing. Now you've got the sellable product that's simple. You want to raise your prices because you're going to attract better clients with higher prices. And now you're ready to start selling. So you set up the, the marketing. You start getting the calls. And how do you sell? You listen. You listen more than you speak. So this really how I take a sales call. So people say to me, first of all, copies for closers. <laughs> Put that in my notes. Put that on your notes. <laughs> so people say to me, they say, AJ, um, they say, I really need a script to sell. And I believe that myself in the past. I always believed that you know, a script was very important to sell, because you definitely want to have some sort of flow. But the problem with a script is the person on the other end of the line doesn't have a script. So if you start speaking with them and you're following a script and they don't respond how you want them to, then you can stumble. So you want to forget the script and you want to think of it like this. 
And the first thing you want to do with people in sales is build rapport. You want to build rapport with them at the top of the call because that's what you want to do is hold rapport with somebody. Once you've got rapport, you want to set the frame of the call. So the frame is, this is what's about to happen. You want to let them know what's going to happen. Hey, we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to see if I can help you. If I can help you, I'll let you know about how I can help you further. If you want to know more about my program, you can ask me about it. If you don't, don't ask me about it. But right now, I want to just find out if there's a good fit and I can help you. Let's see how much I can help you on this call. I mean, that's a basic frame that somebody understands what's going to happen. Also, what I did there was I said, you can ask me about my program if you're interested. You never want to tell them about the program. You want them to ask you about the program. You never want to tell anybody anything. You want to get them to ask you everything. Okay? So if they ask you a question, you ask them a question. Right? So basically, once I got the rapport, once I got the frame, then I can go into the pain. Like, what pain is this person in? Where are they in pain? And Steve, keep asking questions. So how I win in sales is I'm naturally, I'm, I'm really interested in people. I actually care. I really care about people. I'm intrigued, and I keep asking questions. And if you're interested, you become interesting. The more interested you are in them, the more interesting you become, because everybody loves to talk about themselves. So once I got the, fr the pain, I can recap the pain and say, well, this sounds terrible. <laughs> Normally it does sound bloody terrible, you know? And, and check this. Here's a good thing about sales. You go around the streets now today. You go anywhere, right? You go to anyone and say, how are you doing, right? That's what they're going to say to Elijah. They're going to say, I'm doing good. I'm okay, thanks. Yeah, you know, everything's all right. Bullshit, <laughs> right? Every single person responds in that way. So I just recently went to Genius Network um, about five weeks ago or so. When I went there, I wasn't doing too good. And I could have put on a brave face and smiled and, you know, I paid $10,000 to be there for the weekend. I could have smiled and been there and everything's good. But people were asking me, how are you doing? I was like, I'm not doing too good. Why? Because I didn't want to hide from this. I needed to find out what was going wrong. I needed to figure out how to get help. And as soon as I started talking about I'm not doing good, boom, 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 all the experts were sitting around me. How can we help you, AJ? I said, well, I need a lot of help right now. And I got a lot of help from the experts. Imagine I went and I was like, everything's fine, everything's good. So the point being is this. If you ask anybody on your day-to-day endeavors how you're doing, they're going to say, I'm good, thanks. It's just surface level. So if you start digging underneath that, you're going to find out they're not doing good. They just don't trust you enough to tell you. They don't want to be embarrassed to tell you. They want to keep face so they'll tell you. But it's all face. Same with sales. How's the business doing? It's all right. I just got to make a few moves quickly and I'll be here good. It's a lie. Or they're delusional. You got to get underneath that, otherwise you're not going to close the deal. Nice. Nice, huh? Yeah. And then once you get into the pain, you, 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 you wrap it all up and you say, well, this sounds terrible, which it normally does. They may say, well, how can you help me? I don't know. Are you ready to be helped? Yes. Let's talk about this. Todd is in the house. What up, Todd? Greg says, what do you do with the Facebook ad account is canceled? Uh, it depends why it was canceled. I mean, you know, there's a number of reasons why, you know, you need to speak with Facebook. There's, you know, Ryan does all of my Facebook stuff. So Ryan would be the guy to speak with there, Greg. But if something's you know, banned, if something's turned off, if something's disapproved, you've got to dig under the hood. Um, so Leah says, is loneliness a big pain? So it depends. Because, you know, I like being, it depends, right? Because I like to be alone, but I don't like to be lonely. There's a big difference, right? So, like, I like, I like peace and quiet. I really like peace and quiet, but I don't like being alone and feeling lonely. I like being alone and being able to write and be creative. So it depends. So let, let's look at this. Is loneliness a big pain? My target woman is usually in transition mode. How do I label her? A, a woman in transition, like a transition from whatever she is. A woman leaving, you can either say a woman pursuing X or a woman leaving behind Y. Or Assume why leaving behind that. Mm -hmm. Right? There's my dyslexia. Mm -hmm. um, seems like perhaps should focus more on the older woman. 
Um, depends. It depends. I mean, you know, people people say to me this, AJ, check this. So check this, right? So I'm, I'm with Elijah now. Elijah's 22 years old. Elijah come with me last Wednesday, so a week ago tomorrow. Elijah come with me to a seminar, and in that seminar, a 14 year old boy was a coach speaking on stage. One of the top 100 vegan experts in the world. 14 years old. And now he's going to be part of this program. So, like, he's in my demographic. So, people are like, well, what age range should you go? Well, I had his mum with him, so his mum will be part of this. I'll give his mum the login, so his mum will be the person, because obviously he's just 14. But, like, I've spoken with his mum and stayed in touch with him, and now I'll get his mum in here, and he can study all the material and be a part of this, mm. right? But, like, but then I have, you know, like, where, where's the top? Like, where's the top? Like, how, you know, it's like Les Brown, we, Les Brown, I was, so we met Les Brown's son, and Les Brown, who's like the number one motivational speaker in the world, he beamed in on Zoom, something like this, and he basically is 74 years old. He's like, I'm God's supper. But there's a guy at 74 who could be in my target market. I'm not saying I'm going to coach Les Brown, but, right. you know, it's like, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's the demographic? So people always say to me, hey, AJ, like, how do I do like the demographics? Like, what kind of age range should I be looking at? I don't really look at that. I just look at the problem the market has, and then I'll go and serve that problem. And we can do a lot of tests with age ranges inside of Facebook, but I leave that to Ryan. I don't even look at that myself. I look at the big problem I'm going to solve. Does that make sense, Leo? Um, so more on the old woman, maybe. Instead of busy corporate women professionals, after my review with Aaron Wang, I need to get this straight so I can implement it this week. <laughs> or as I also thought of uh, pros prosperous empty nesters as another niche suggestions. <clears throat> so what I would say with you is you, you now you're talking about two different niches. And I would I would separate them, I would put them on two bits of paper, and I'd start working through one, working through the other. And when I say working through them, which one would you want to serve the most? Like which one do you feel the most like passion towards? Because you know, it's like, which, what do I follow? Do I follow my passion or the profits? Well, I'm always going to look where the profits are. If there's profits over here and there's no profits in my passion, I'm following the profit. It's a business. I'm going to have to suck it up. I'm going to have to do what is needed to follow the profit. Otherwise, I'm not in business. A lot of people follow the passion, but they're broke, right? Just, you know, look at most artists. They're broke because they follow their passion and there's no profit in that, right? That's fine if you want to be a passionate artist. Writer, videographer, um, you know, bloody whatever you want to call it, uh, artist. But if, you, if you're in a market where there's no money and you're passionate about it, that's fine. For me, if I had the option, follow my profit, follow my passion, I'm going to follow the profit because I'm a businessman. But if I can actually look at this, well, there's profit here and there's profit here. There's less profit with this passion project than over here, but I'd be happy. Then I'll go with the less profit. Because I can actually bring my energy into that, and I can actually capture a good part of that marketplace. Just because I'm really passionate, I can speak passionately about it. Mm. Just so I can follow that. So, so the same is for you, Leah. You want to look at both of these. Which one would you be more passionate and speaking with? It's like if you offered me, you know, half a million a year to speak to, you know, coaches, or three million a year to speak about poodles, poodle dogs, all day. I would take the I would take the pay cut to not speak about poodles all day. So it's not something that I'm really interested in speaking about. Wake up every day speaking to people about grooming poodles. It just it just wouldn't be for me. Do you understand? Um, but if I if I have both markets, so I get to speak about marketing or I get to speak about sales, let's just say that, and I have to separate it. Hmm. I mean, oof, that would be a tricky one for me, right? Because I like speaking about both. I call myself a marketer, not a salesperson, but a lot of people want to give me a lot of money to learn sales from me. I'd have to look at it. I really have to weigh up my odds. Would I want to be speaking about marketing all day, or would I want to be speaking about sales all day? I'd have to think about that. There would be, you know, there would definitely be, uh, there would definitely be two pieces of paper, and I'd have to really think about that. So, um, I don't know if to answer your first question. Uh, I don't know if you should just focus on older women. I think you should focus on the pain. And um, you've asked, like, your know, transition mode, how do I label her? 
Uh, like I said, I think a woman in transition, you can post more in a bit, Leah. And then look at those two niches. So cool. So, uh, and then by the way, anybody drop your questions in the chat box. Let me know if you have any questions for me. So Denise says, do we need to do any social media to build up our know, like, and trust and our authority before doing this? So my response is going to be no. And here's why I say no first. Like straight response is no. Because it's a distraction. It's going to get you focused on just like playing around, building these audiences who are never going to buy. Okay? Let's just imagine they don't buy. Now they may buy, but let's just say that they don't buy. Okay? Um, however, is it worthwhile? Uh, is it worthwhile to build your audience? A little bit. Okay, let me say. Is it worthwhile to build your audience? Well, yes. And here's why I'll say yes. Because people in this day and age do research. Like I think it's like 80, 90 percent of people do research before they buy anything. So if they actually start to look you up and they start to see good content, then they may buy because of that. So I don't look at it as they're going to see my content and then come and buy. I see that they, I'm going to drive them to do business with me. Then they're going to do the research, and that backs up that then they want to do business with me. So like we're building my content on my social media, but I'm not like looking at it as any money play. We're just putting out good content. Like that's the only way I'm looking at it, is putting good content out. That's it. Um, but do you need to do any social media to build up? You know, like and trust and authority before doing this? No. But I just do it in conjunction with if you please. And I left my social media for years. Like I was in the game before social media started. And it's like so funny. It's like, wow, like I've just never been interested in social media. I've seen it as not a fad, but I've seen it as something that's just come along. And I'm like, that is such a distraction. You know, like I have like literally, when did social media start? Because I remember this. When I was when I first started writing my books. We called it, we didn't even know what social media was going to be. We were calling it Web 2.0. That's what, that's what we were calling it. And we knew Web 3.0 would be machines, AI. We didn't even know it was called AI back then. We just knew that Web 3.0, the machine would be thinking for us. And that's obviously, you know, if you look at Ray Kurzweil and those guys over at Google with our artificial intelligence, like that's all coming into play. But like when we were, when we were starting out, Web 1.0 was forums and basically chat logs. <laughs> so when social media comes, this web 2.0, I looked at it and I was like, it's cool, you know, we can actually like speak with people, but like this is not how to build a business. And then if you look at all of these influencers, most of them don't make money. They got these big followings, but they don't make money. And I just, I just looked at the whole situation, I'm like, huh, I don't like this, this whole situation is not good. And if we go back to my books, I wrote many books over the years, um, and I was trained to write by somebody called Rich Sheffron, who's like the guru to the gurus, and Rich basically used to predict the future. So if you go to all of his books, he'd be predicting the future, like the Attention Age Doctrine, great book. And basically, he was showing me of like looking for trends and stuff. And as I was looking forward, I was looking at all these trends, I'm like, wait a minute, like I need to stay away from that and I need to focus on this. Mm -hmm. I was building real businesses, multi-million dollar businesses than just being caught up in the social media. Um, so it's definitely, it's just definitely one of those things. Do, do you want to be on social media or not? If not, don't do it because it's just going to, you know, it's going to waste your time, right? Like you're going to waste your time doing it. Like I don't want to be on social media, but I want to put good content out there. <clears throat> Can you point me to a software that can gather LinkedIn emails for our connections that no longer give us? Um... So I can introduce you to somebody, Denise, with regards to uh, LinkedIn stuff. We were actually with uh, at that seminar. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. See you. Thank you very much. Um, my wonderful assistant, Lacey, has left the building. Um, so we're looking at, by the way, we're looking at decorating this place. So we're looking to get this place set up and sorted. Um, so Denise, if you send me a, a message, I can introduce you to somebody. If you send me a personal message on Facebook, I can actually introduce you to somebody that can help you with the LinkedIn stuff. Um, so Greg says his Facebook was shut down for an ad violation. Then um, change the ad. You know, don't violate the, the terms and services of uh, just had to do it. Facebook. Remember? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Uh, Chelsea's joined the building. What up, Chelsea? Um, Todd says, this is some good stuff. What up, Todd? Um, so, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's the real stuff, you know? It's like, it, it just, it is what it is, and that's what is. <laughs> um, Greg says, Facebook said that they do not like my business model. Um, well, you, okay, well then, <clears throat> that's fine. Then you need to assess the business model that you have and make it look different. Because I don't know what the business model is. We haven't spoke for a long time, buddy. But if you are adding value into people's lives and you are helping people and it's not some business opportunity but it's really helping people or businesses and it's a true value, then you just need to change the way that it sounds. Like your writing could just make it sound like something it isn't. You know, I, I've seen people who they were banned, 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 banned from Facebook, and they changed the way they framed their business, and Facebook let it, let it fly. Um, so Todd says, uh, but then again, I don't know what business model you have, buddy. Um, Todd says, what is a good way to find out the pain of over 40 executives who are overweight? Most won't give you the time of day. Any ideas? Absolutely. I mean, look, let's just look at this. Like, we can go through this ourselves. What pain does an over 40-year-old man have that's overweight? Well, first of all, he's overweight. So where does this show up? So what we want to look for is root causes. We're going to, we're going to really start to dig into this somewhere. So somebody who's overweight, what happens? Well, the person's overweight, so the person may uh, feel lethargic, may have low energy. The person may be getting up in the mornings not wanting to get up in the mornings. The person wishes that the person could go to the gym, but just, you know, something's going on in their brain. So now we're talking about two things, brain and their body. Now we've got their appearances, like they may be conscious of how people perceive them. They may have dreams and aspirations. So now we can look at their dreams and aspirations they have. So we're looking at the, the, the mind, the, the conscious awareness of people, the dreams and aspirations, their energy. Um, I'm just looking at different things that we can actually start to circle, because we could have something in the middle of a piece of paper, and all of these would be branches out around them. All of these would have um, spawns off it, right? That we could actually go further and deeper into them. So um, what else? What else? Um, so the person may be, um, the person may have given up, the person may uh, not feel worthy, the person may feel unloved, the, may, the person may feel upset, the person may um, of, of a number of things of that. We can just keep going. Now we're looking at those, like, okay, let's just pick one of those. So throw any one of those at me. Remember anything I said? Yeah. Uh, appearance. Afraid. Appearance. So now the person's always uh, conscious of how people perceive that person. The person is embarrassed of how the person looks. The person um, had to spend more money because they had to change all of their clothes because now they've grown out of their old clothes. The person wishes they could fit back into the old clothes that are in their cupboard, that are sitting there in the cupboard. The person um, doesn't want to take vacations because the person doesn't want to be by the poolside yeah. looking embarrassed. The person... Um, I have a friend who wouldn't go to the gym because he didn't want people at the gym to see him not be able to run or lift weights. There you go, yeah. The person doesn't want to go to the gym because he's embarrassed that if he goes to the gym, it's like, like a lot of people who don't join my right. elite coaching program, they don't feel ready to join the group. But everybody's successful apart from me and I don't want to be in that group where everybody else is successful. Exact same thing. It's You walk in the gym and that's where you start. You start getting on the treadmill. You know, if you know, People will be inspired if the person's overweight and the person's there sweating and trying and going to that treadmill but really giving it some. And not just showing up once and then never showing up again, consistently showing up, that's an inspiring person. But that's the person everyone looks at and says, wow, that's the person we should be following. Not the other way around. But you've got to be consistent. Consistency is key. So, so basically, based on that, Todd, um, you know, the appearance, the person is uh, like worried what people think about them. They, they think people are talking behind their back. They, um, they feel that their, their, their sex life is suffering. They feel that their wife may not love them anymore. They, they feel like they're going to die early. They feel like they're not going to have time for their grandchildren. They're, not, they're going to be not in good shape to, look, to play with their grandchildren. So all of this comes into play, Todd. Like all of this and more. 
Let's just say in like two, three minutes there. Imagine putting two, three hours sitting down with me, bam, putting this down for two, three hours. You know, the guy's going to have, a, you know, the, the, the aim of the game is to explain the pain better than the person can explain the pain themselves. If you can explain somebody's pain better than they can explain themselves, they look to you for the solution. Boom, money. Mm -hmm. um, Hugh, what would you say are the top three niches you have seen from an able to market to from your perspective, like high ticket wise? So, I mean, health, wealth, and relationships. Like they're the three, that's the umbrella there, like you know, in the health. And we can, we can have a load of sub niches, like in the wealth, sub niches. Relationships, but like they're the, they're the top three here. Really, you know, and then like for instance in relationships, I've had people who have been in my programs who are uh, dating experts. And in the same token, next to them I have another client who is a marriage counselor. And in the same token, I have another person who is teaches, you know, and so like it just goes on and on and on. And then in, in the weight loss, it's like, you know, how to fix diabetes, your diabetes or how to, um, how to lose weight, uh, you know, just, just how to lose weight or how to like eat healthy foods. Like, so there's so many different sub niches that come under it. Like, I mean, if I've coached, yeah, I'm, I'm talking, I've coached into thousands of people. I don't know what it is, but like thousands, whether it's, it's, you know, well over a thousand. It could be towards 2,000, let's just say, right? Or maybe even more than 2,000. But that's how many people I've coached. There's a lot of different bloody people. <laughs> and normally it comes up that health, wealth, and relationships. is very, very few that it's uh, outside of that. Uh, Denise says, how do I message you, Alex? It says you have too many friends. It, Denise, post it into the Facebook group then, and I will actually uh, respond in the Facebook group. Tag me. And then um, I'm going to delete some friends and... Uh, add all of you, so throw some likes up or some hearts up here if you want to. If you want me to friend you, and I'll delete some people. So there's five thousand people on my <laughs> friends list that could be deleted for some of you. How about that? Um, so, so Leah says this. Hmm, I'm stuck. If someone is transitioning from X to Y, mostly women, what is the pain? Well, there's there's pain in transition, right? Can, can you do me a favor? Can you give me a coffee, please? Cool. Yeah. <clears throat> there's there's pain in transition. Think about this. There's pain in transition. Whenever we move from one place to another, there's pain. There's learning. There's adapting. There's uncertainties. There's fears. There's regrets. There's a host of things. <clears throat> somebody's pain somebody so people so people will pay you money to move away from pain than towards desirable results so people will pay more to get away from than towards okay people will pay more to remove pain than to actually get gain so for instance going back to the other person Leah uh, people would pay more money to get rid of their weight than to have a six pack. They would rather remove all of that badness than the goodness. It just, it just is what it is. So <clears throat> this may be, so Leah says, uh, what's the pain? Anxiety, loss, finding a purpose. This may be better because of my own personal transitional experience than empty nester because I'm not there yet. But what is the pain? For me, it was the pain of being lost for a little while, but is that a real pain? Well, yes, but we have to explore it further and further and further. We really have to like write this out. Like, this needs to be listed extensively. We can't, like, <clears throat> listen to what I said. The aim of the game is to understand the pain better than the market. So you can't just be like, well, what is it? Is it lost? And you've got to go in. You've got to get inside of the head of your perfect prospect. You've got to understand the perfect prospect better than they understand themselves. This takes work. This, you know, it's like, okay, what was I going through? Pen and paper, Leah, I'm telling you. Pen and paper is like how I do this. So like, lost. Well, let's just talk about lost. Right? Let's use that word. So, lost. Well, what are they lost in? 
Well, they're lost in direction. What does lost in direction bring to them? Lost in direction brings to them that they do not have certainty. So the opposite of that, that is uncertainty. So they are uncertain of their direction. What does that do? That's going to waste time. What does that do? They're going to, you know, fear of missing out. What does, you know, what does that do? They may make a mistake. They may ruin their life. Oh my gosh, I need to stay in this job. I, I, I have to stay here because I'm, I may make a mistake and I may make the wrong move. So now they don't know what move to make and they've got fear of making the wrong move. So they're, they're scared of the uncertainty. That keeps them trapped. Now they're trapped. They're now lost and trapped. They're trapped in something they hate. They're trapped in something they want to get out of, but they're stuck. And that makes them sad. And they may be depressed. And they may be unhappy. And they may feel unfulfilled. And they may feel like giving up. But they can't. They've got to keep going. They've got to provide. Who have they got to provide for? They've got to look after people. So now, they've, now they're just in the rat race. They're just in it with no passion. They don't like what they're doing. They don't feel fulfilled. They feel like they feel mistreated. For whatever reason they want to get away from it, what's the reasons they want to get away from it? All of those reasons are very important reasons that would sell them. So they, they now sit there waking up with dread. They go to bed, they drink in the evenings because they just don't want to go to sleep because the next morning they've got to wake up and do it all over again. And when they wake up, just it's a mess. And now they're living in dread. And then they're going through the cycle, they're going through the day, and they may be numbing the pain out, they may be taking painkillers, they may be taking pills, they may be smoking some weed, they may be drinking alcohol. They may be doing that to numb it. They may be breaking the law. They may be you know, driving under the influence. So now they're breaking the law. Now they're breaking the law, and they're, they're law-abiding citizens, but they found themselves in this despair. And like Elijah said, maybe they're just bitter about everything. They used to be happy, and now they're bitter. So their whole attitude on life has changed. So now they're just living this existence that isn't them. They don't feel like themselves anymore. They feel not even just lost in the world, but lost in themselves. They're feeling like going to India and going to a retreat to find themselves. So, I mean, <clears throat> you know, there's just so much we can actually dig and uncover on these people, Leah. And if you live to yourself, then you've got to really go deep in how you felt. It's a really good indicator to start with, you know? And even ask people. You can really start to ask people about themselves. Um, okay, so does that make sense, Leah? So Greg, so go back to Greg. Greg says, thanks, Alex. <clears throat> okay, I get it. I help newbies on the Forex market trade with more confidence and consistency uh, using my property pimp and run TM strategy method, coaching membership site, education, model left for the best, bro. So, I mean, I've got a client right now, Greg, who's doing $300,000 a month he did 300 grand last month in this niche, in the Forex niche. So there's a way of, there's a way of uh, positioning yourself differently, I would say, Greg. <clears throat> yeah, never, ne you don't want to be making profit claims, absolutely. All right, any other questions, fire them. So Deborah says, Hey Deborah, so speak with Carl about that. Uh, so Deborah says uh, she's a bit confused. Thank you, my friend. Yep, one cream, one sugar. Huh? There's one cream, one sugar. Sugar? I'm sweet enough. <laughs> Deborah, message Carl with regards to that. Okay, Carl can actually help you. He's your guy. Marcos. I would like to coach busy executive fathers <clears throat> who are 40 plus with their children under nine. Oh, by the way, would you like the mug? <laughs> I like the mug. Yeah, look at that mug there. Thank you, Elisha. Yep. Product placement. <laughs> Product placement. I'm going, to change, I'm going to change hands just for that. CIA, baby. CIA. Whoop.
Leah says, love it, you're awesome. Okay, Marcos. And by the way, fire questions if you have any questions for me. Otherwise, I'm just going to give some training for the rest of the time. <clears throat> so, uh, Marco says, I would like to coach busy executive fathers who are 40 plus with children under nine who do not have the health and energy to play and have that, the energy to interact with them. They fear that they will not have a relationship with, in the future with their kids. Would this be a good niche? So, first of all, <clears throat> I don't think they need to just be over 40. And for that reason, I'm 37 and you know I'm fit and healthy right now and I'm pretty much like, you know, I'm leaning up for a six pack boy. I'm training like I'm training hard. But like two years ago, training hard, huh? Mm -hmm. Yesterday you want to see me in the gym yesterday. Oh my goodness gracious me, it was tough. It was like way tougher than the other stuff that I've been doing. Um, but like two years ago, three years ago, so I would have been 34 years old, I was like a little fat little git. My belly was by there. I was fat. I was like bloated all over. And I just did not have the energy to get off the sofa. So like I was 34 is what I'm saying, Marcos. And I had children under nine because my son's now 11. So my son would have been eight. And I just didn't feel like playing with them because I didn't have the energy. It wasn't I didn't feel like playing with them. It was I didn't have the energy. So <clears throat> my point being here is you just don't need to put the age range demographic on it. Right? You don't say you don't need to put that age range. You just need to say, okay, I'm speaking to fathers with children right. who have not the energy for their children. They want to get that energy in their body. Because what we're talking about here is the same thing as like somebody else who wants to go to the gym to get good energy, to go to the job and show up. But there's a different reasoning. You could put them through the exact same training. You could bring in a woman as well. So you wouldn't even need to be a man. It could be, unless there's certain things, but I doubt it. But let's just say man for now. You could be, bring a man in, and the man could go through your training with you and get good energy to show up and find a girlfriend at the bar. When you could actually get the same guy to the energy, or a different guy, sell him on the energy to play with his children. So you're just using a different message, but the training could be the same. Same problem. So yeah, same problem. <clears throat> Brian says grandparents too, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Absolutely, 100%. <clears throat> All right, throw some love up in here if you like this. There's no more questions. I'm, I'm going to fire some. Uh, I'm going to fire some training at you. Uh, let me have a think in my mind. Okay, I'm writing a book. I have zero agenda for the book, like zero outcome, and I'm normally a guy who has. Um, an agenda for everything. So I'm the kind of guy who, when I do something, there's an outcome. I never, I never move forward. <clears throat> I never start here and move forward trying to figure things out. I have an end result, and I work back from that end result. Like I already have planned out 2019. Some people are thinking, <clears throat> well, what's my New Year's resolution? Screw the New Year's resolution. I'm already thinking about the the New Year in 2020. Do you get me? Yep. It's like screw the New Year's resolution. So I'm looking at the next year, and I'm reverse engineering. I've already planned that out. We've been on this TV. I've mapped everything out and drawn it. And this, we all, And by the way, one of the things we have for, for here, this studio, is we're going to fix all the lighting. We're going to fix the studio out. We're having different cameras, multiple cameras. Another thing is we're going to be growing this group. You know, there's, there's a small group right now. We've got 100 people in here. But this is, you know, we're going to put thousands of people in here. Like we have a whole, like a whole plan of attack, right? I think from the end result, and then I reverse engineer. With my book, the book's not even part of my ecosystem. It's just a piece of content that I want to put into the world that I think is great. So it's a passion piece. I've just been banging at this, banging at this book. So I'll, I'll share with you some of the ideas that are, that are in there. Um, Denise says, since I don't have clients yet, would it be a good idea to, one, post on LinkedIn that I'm offering a pilot program to teach business coaches how to get a consistent flow of clients via LinkedIn? Um, so I have a process. Learn, apply, teach. If you... I, so basically, I'm put it this way. When I launched Clients in Abundance, even though there was fear because I was launching something big, I was sitting right by here. My buddies were sitting over there, swirling around on the chairs. 
And I'm like, oh my God, I'm scared. Like I'm launching this program. This is going to be huge. I'm scared. And this was back in February, 2018. And they're like, you're fine. You're Alex Jeffries. I'm like, no, I feel scared. Like, you know, I have real fear. Like I'm going to put myself out there and be vulnerable and be, you know, put my passion out there. And, uh, all I knew was if somebody gives me money, I can help them. That's all I knew. If any of you join clients in abundance elite, I can help you just every coaching class. I'm always somebody. There's not a question that I can't answer and a problem I can't solve because the market is a market that I've worked with for many years and I've been through all of the problems many times. I've, I've failed more times than you have. I have tried more times than you have. So that said, when you've got a problem, I'm like, here's the quick fix. Not, not, it's, it's your shortcut, but it's not cutting corners. Make sense? I can give you a shortcut without cutting the corner. I have found the problems. I have overcome the problems. So every problem you have, I've had, and I've overcome them to build a multi-million dollar business. You know, this year we've made seven figures since launching CIA. Hey, Elijah, we should, we should get a, a, a website with a merch on that. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I face the problems. <clears throat> and by the way, that, that isn't part of our ecosystem, so we're not going to get the website with the merch on it. But we give it out with a seminar, by the way. If you come to our uh, seminars, you will actually uh, get it all for free. Um, we hand them out to everybody. So Greg was asking, I want one of those cups. So, uh, so yeah, so I've just been pounded at this book, and I'm going to put it out there. What will happen of it? I don't know. It could be the biggest thing that ever happens for my business. I don't know. All I know is the book's really good. I'm going to look at some of the some of the pieces now. I'll share with you. But Deborah says, since I don't have any clients yet, would it be a good idea to post on LinkedIn that I'm offering a pilot program to teach business coaches how to get a consistent flow of clients via LinkedIn? Only if you know how to get a consistent flow of clients from LinkedIn. If you don't, then not. Because I have a process: learn, apply, teach. L A T. Learn, apply, teach. How's she going to learn it? Huh? How's she going to learn it? Well, you've got to learn. You've just got to go out there and learn, like anything. It's just like, it's like basically when I, to give you an understanding, when I uh, launched my book about how to make money on eBay, I didn't just go out and say, hey, like, can I go and teach this? No, I went and learned how to make money on eBay. I went and studied everything I could, and I studied, I studied, I studied, and I started making money on eBay, and I, and I applied that, and I applied that until I was making money on eBay. Right. And then I could teach it, and I wrote a book about it. Then I launched the book. And that book then went on to the internet, and I sold this book for $97. But now I'm not just making money on eBay, now I wrote a book, now I built a website, and now I built an affiliate program, and now I've got all these affiliates driving traffic, and I've built a mailing list, and that took me about a year to go through. Mm -hmm. So now I've now built this business, so then I'm like, holy shit, I've just made like $80,000 selling this book, I made about $25,000, $35,000 from the mailing list. I've just made $115,000 this year. I'm going to write a book about this, how I did it. Yeah. So then I wrote a book about how I did that. And I called that book, so the, my first product was called Easy Profit Auctions. And then I wrote a second book called Post Launch Profit Secrets. Uh, no, sorry, Post Launch Profits. Mm -hmm. And I give that book away for free, Post Launch Profits. I give that away for free. And I had tens of thousands of readers. And then I started to email those subscriber base. And I started making money from that subscriber base when I was emailing them. And about six months later, I wrote a second book called Post Launch Profit Secrets. The secrets behind how I gave away a free book and made all of this money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I, I got about another 20,000 subscribers. And now I'm making like 20,000 a month consistently, about 20,000 a month. And I'm emailing my subscribers, and I'm blogging, and I'm posting, I'm adding good content. And all of a sudden, people are saying, AJ, can you coach me? And after about eight months, I launched my first coaching program, Marketing with Alex. And then I launched a coaching program, and I actually fell in love with coaching. Yep. And that's pretty much how I started my coaching business. My coaching business, the first week, we sold it for 500 bucks, which is crazy. We sold six, 650 people in the first week. Blew my mind. From that point onwards, I've never looked back. I said, I love coaching. Every year, raise my prices, but also just absolutely blown away by like knowing how to make money. I was right. saying, that was the first time I came into real money. I was like, whoa. Right. Carl Avery's in the building. What's up, Carl? How's it going, my brother? 
<clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> uh, so Carl, Deborah was asking a question earlier. Uh, Deborah Luke, definitely uh, a question for you, my buddy, just with regards to like login issues and stuff. Uh, Gregory says, uh, uh, Greg says, Alex, how are you pacing yourself to write a book? So here's the uh, here's the thing about writing a book. It's just flowing out to me. So I woke up Saturday morning and I started pounding the keyboard. And I was just like on my phone. And then on Sunday I started pounding it. And just like and then um I know it just flowed out of me. And now what I've got to do is I've got basically now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put into a tool called Workflowy, which is a tool that I use to, to plan out everything. And I'm gonna then find structure of all of the, the chapters. I can move it around in workflowy. And then I can add all of my notes into each chapter. And then I'm going to audio record it on my phone. I'm going to use rev.com, R-E-V.com, which is a transcription service. I'm going to just audio record it all. Bam, 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 bam. I get that transcribed. I'm going to give that to somebody to clean through. And then I should have a book, version one. And then I can go through it and basically put my polish, my final touches to it. And I, that should be it. And I'm not going to try and be a perfectionist, but I'm going to have a good, it's going to be good. Like each and every one of you will love it. Like, see, maybe not love it, you'll like it, or it'll be helpful. Mm -hmm. It's going to be helpful to everyone. I mean, I have zero doubt this is for like every entrepreneur. That's what it is. And that's why I'm like, tell them what it's called. Huh? You told them what it's called. <clears throat> no, I haven't told you what it's called. But if you, if you want to let me know what you think of it in the chat box, the book is called Fuck the Grind. I like it. There's nothing wrong with being a hustler. There's nothing wrong with working hard, but grinding, fuck that. <clears throat> um, so Greg says, how many pages per day your outline? I don't know. Um, I have I have zero pages. I've just got, all I've got in here is a load of notes, and I just make like, uh, like I'll just go, oh, there's another chapter. Boom, so let me, let me have a look here. So I'll tell you some of the chapters. Um, let me find this. So uh, obviously we've got an introduction, but then I've got a chapter about belief. Um, uh, so I'm just going to share with you some of the ideas. So stick to the plan. Um, let me go through here. Okay, so leverage, uh, uh, putting away screw you money, how to cover your nut, what does that mean? Uh, don't get it right, just get it going. Saving money beyond screw you money. Doing versus talking, buying time with money. Uh, Koto Bot, keep on top of being on top, the imperfect perfectionist, grinding versus hustling, the underdog effect, self-sabotage, fear of success or failure. Um, everybody has either one. Uh, happiness, uh, hard work, how it pays off. Work on your craft, show up, not show off. Um, you get one life, uh, why business plans don't work. Uh, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. <clears throat> uh, visioning, um, keeping it simple, what to do each week. How I find freedom and structure, the 80-20 rule, and how to really focus on that simply. Um, I'm a bad boy to a good guy. Mm. I like that. Zero fucks. Uh, adversity, not university. How I made it through adversity, not university. Um, make more work less. How to do it fast and easy. Um, how to work your way out of a business. What you should focus on in the business. Marketing and cutting checks. Uh, why self-study is important. Systems and processes. Um, why cash is king, problems create solutions, uh, the success trap, the three types of people in the world, the imposter, reflect and project, stabilize, optimize, expand, Oof. the high ticket ecosystem, uh, the difference between hustling and grinding we spoke about earlier, the perfect average day, end of day marketing, uh, automation before delegation, um, why you should hire coaches and mentors, and I keep going and going and going, but like these are just like, like these are just chapters, what are you saying? Each of those are gonna be chapters. Yeah, just like, they can be short, they can yeah, be short. Sure, they don't need to be, it's not gonna be long-winded, they're not gonna be yeah. stories, it's just straight, this is what you need to do in this thing. Why you need a personal assistant, your not to-do list, set them up, knock them down, which I started here with earlier, um, the crazy voice in your head, how to detach self-worth from net worth, uh, why I removed alcohol and weed from my life, Activity versus accomplishment, invest money for time. I spoke about that already. Um, every negative has a positive. Um, you should, are you feeling fucked off or fulfilled on a Friday? 
what to do on the weekends. Yeah. Uh, this is a series of sprints, not a marathon. Um, Self-awareness, uh, the delegation list, know your numbers. Uh, plan tomorrow, today, every day. Don't reinvent the wheel. Chip away every day. Uh, being proactive versus reactive. Your two lives, because everybody has two lives, but you only got one life to live. Um, most important tasks, uh, fears, the three ways to grow a business. Um, work hard, play harder or not. Mm. It's interesting, because yeah. like when I was younger, I would, I would live by this. I would work hard and play harder, but now like as I'm older, I want to work hard and relax. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like I was just like just crazy. Um, living the dream. Flow states, uh, planning, life enriching stuff ahead, uh, self awareness, um, and then recap, closing chapters, uh, removing the ego, tactics versus strategies, um, res respect the game and fuck the fame, um, social media and self worth. Um, yeah. And then start from the bottom now. You're here. Um, yeah. That's awesome. So they're just a load of chapters that I've just been pounding at. I love it. Cool, huh? It's going to be packed. Seems yeah, and I don't want it to be long. I don't want it to be long-winded. I don't want it to be, right. like, drawn out. I just like, bum, bum, yep. bum. And if I can... Now what? So basically, I have this. Now I'm going to start to put them in an order where I think they all fall into each other. So it's like a domino effect. Then you read it, it starts to build and build and build. Yeah. Like I said, you know, I have no real outcome to that book apart from just to get in the hands of entrepreneurs and just, I know it'll be very helpful. What it does for us, I don't know. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. Um, I hope that was helpful. So what's the time here? Okay, so we have a few more minutes left. So if anybody wants to ask me any questions, you can find the questions in the chat box now. Um, or I can do some quick wrap ups with some tips and a book of my choice. Um, so De Denise says, so what would my steps be? I did already get over 1,200 connections on LinkedIn on my own. I can teach them how to leverage LinkedIn. I don't have two years to do this. It doesn't matter how long you have to do this. This has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them. As soon as we think about us and like our needs, we miss out on the needs of our market. The market doesn't care about you. They don't care about what you've been through, what you're going through, what, what you're going to go through. They only care about them. They are selfish. Human beings are selfish. So you've got to think about them. So what, what is your experience you've already been through, Denise? How can that help them? As soon as we start thinking about ourselves, ladies and gents, we can lose. So if you've got 1,200 connections on LinkedIn, cool. How has that served you up until now? Can you use that to serve you now? But your market is going to want to know how to make things quicker and easier for themselves. They don't care about you. Mm. True. Um, <clears throat> So, so basically, there's a technical question. Uh, I'll go to YouTube about that, Denise, uh, on about workflowy. Uh, just, just basically, uh, uh, just get some. Uh, just type in workflowy tutorials. Workflowy is definitely something like when you first get to use it, it's a bit confusing. I've been using it for three years, and my whole life is in there. My whole communication with my assistant is in there. Everything, everything about my life is in workflowy. I love it. Um, cool. So there's no more questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at a book here. I'm gonna figure out what book I want to speak about. Um, does that make sense, though, Denise? What I just shared with you. Let me know. I know you don't have two years to. Uh, I don't know. I know you don't have two years to figure it out, but you can figure it out in two days, two weeks, two hours, two months. But again, you've got to figure it out for them. As entrepreneurs, we are problem solvers. That means we've got to go through problems. We've got to figure them out to sell the solution to somebody else. I wouldn't be stood here again, paid a lot of money if I hadn't figured out everything I figured out. And that means I sat down on my own and got to work um, and, I, and I invested in mentors, you know? Look at this, why I opened it to that page. Uh, don't promise what you can't deliver. When selling our ideas, we tend to overpromise in our enthusiasm for our creation, in our vision of how we hope it will be. We leave no room for failure. The result will probably be disappointing, not disastrous, but a little less than expected. 
No one will say anything. They just won't trust you quite as much the next time. <laughs> Basically, you've blown it. If instead you undersell, pointing out the possible weaknesses and how to resolve them, should they occur, you're not the only one to build a trust relationship with your client, but you will. you're able to solve any problems. And if it does turn out the way you hoped, it's a bonus. Uh, so there's a book here by Paul Arden, which is called, It's Not How Good You Are, It's How Good You Want to Be. And I just opened that page randomly. And then Denise says, you know, I would give them a discount to join my pilot program so they would know they got a discount on the info. Absolutely, as long as you can have them, Denise. That's all I'm saying. Like I'm, like, I'm only going to take money off somebody if I know I can help them. That's it. If I'm 100% confident in the outcome. See, when I launched Clients in Abundance, I was scared. Not because I knew I couldn't teach people, because I knew the outcome I'd get people to. I was scared of, one, being vulnerable, because I knew I was going to be different in my marketing than I had in the previous years, because Dean Graziosi told me not to serve my head anymore, but to serve with my heart. So that was, that was kind of why I was getting scared, and I was also going through recovery, you know, stopped drinking alcohol, and you know, I was basically you know, changing my life. My whole life's changed this, this year, uh, which is amazing to think on. I'm going to sit after this, I'm going to sit down and just like, think about that, like how much my life has changed this year. It's quite, it's quite crazy. Um, like Dean also said, because I, I didn't, I didn't shave my head, didn't have a shave, I got spots on me where I've been taking, I've been taking massages, I've been getting a lot more massages. I'm not wearing a belt. Normally, when I'm on video, I'd want to like, you know, be dressed smart, and I would want to have my hair shaved, and I would want to have a shave, and I'd want all my spots. Okay. Dean, Dean told me, do videos with messy hair. Even I don't have hair, Dean. He said, well, just pretend you have hair, just short, messy. It's fine. Just get you know, just get out there. It's basically get out with your own weight. Don't don't care too much about you. Care about them. Uh, so going back to uh, Leah, there's a thing in here that, that he talks about. Getting fired can be a positive career move. Every negative becomes a positive, or it can be the way you look at it. Interpretation. So Denise, all I'm going to say is with, uh, and then and then perfect. Look what Ryan said here. If you know you can help them and you don't take their money, then you are doing them a disservice. So when I launched Clients in Abundance, I knew I could help people. So we started taking their money and then I had to work through the process of delivering the content. And we, yes, we give it to them as a discount. We sold it at half the price that we sell it actually less than half the price that we sell it at now. But then we had our core group, we called them our founded members. And we brought those members in and we worked with them, built the program that you now have access to. Client ba client based content, right? Client based content, yes. Client driven content. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Leah says, Yes, I, I love I know the negatives. Perfect. And then um, Ryan says, I kicked off my first company after getting fired. So um, I basically uh, I basically did that. When I was like, I'm out. And he's like, no, you're not. You've said this before. And I'm like, well, there's my middle finger. I'm not coming back. And that drove me to leave in and, and focus on that. And because I wanted to prove people wrong, because people didn't believe in me, I worked and I worked and I worked and I worked and I worked. And I worked and I worked and I worked and I worked and I worked. And that was over 15, about 15 years ago. And now I don't want to prove people wrong. That's been my driving motivator up until now. But now I don't want to prove people wrong. Now I want to prove people right. You know what I'm saying? So with that said, we are wrapping this up. Uh, we are on the hour over here. So this has been Mr. Jeffries. It's been an absolute pleasure sharing with you, answering your questions. Between now and the next session, take action on what needs to be taken action on. Study what needs to be studied um, inside of the members area. Go through the material. Like <clears throat> People think the successful people are in the light all the time. I'll promise you this. When the cameras are off now, I'm going to be working. I work in quiet, I work in silence, I put some headphones on, I listen to music, I get the work done. I go through my to-do list. I, I follow my training in area one. You know, yesterday, but yesterday was such a productive day for me because on the weekend, I planned out my week, my outcomes, my to-do list, what I wanted to do, and yesterday I went through and I almost hit off everything yesterday. I almost hit everything off my week to-do list yesterday. And it isn't like now today I'm scrambling. No, I can just look back through my, wow, look how much I've accomplished already. 
And now I'm just going to look at the targets. We still got a few targets to hit. All right. Off to hit the targets. With that said, Mr. Jeffrey Sun, I want to say peace out, chat now, over and out. Enjoy your week, ladies and gents. See ya.